It's Dead Doogie here with Chapter 7, Part 2 of my Dead Space 2 uh, No Damage Run and Zealot Difficulty. Part 1, um, we left off right by the node room, so here we are, we're going to go into the node room, pick up some stuff, and then we're going to make uh, a run out to space. The space race. And then we're going to have a kind of like a, a non-boss fight boss fight. And the non-boss fight boss fight is also one of the reasons why I'm considering doing a new game plus playthrough. Because we kind of cheese it. It's a, it's an area where um, enemies just keep spawning and we just have to keep fighting them off. And you know, that's kind of dangerous for a no damage run because you know the more you're in a fight the greater the probability that you might take a hit or something like that and the other thing though okay before i say that here is another bit of the little ptsd where she's just so uber whiny right now It's basically a conversation about being in touch with your feelings, right? And that sounds, um, I'm, I'm going to say cliche, you know, men versus women cliche kind of thing. You never talk about your feelings. And I'm not trying to make fun of women. I think there's some truth to that. Actually, probably a lot of truth to um, us kind of hiding our feelings. Anyway. So I, I really like this uh, this out in space stuff. There's going to be a lot of time spent out of here just opening crates. Um, I talked about that previously in a different in a previous like video about opening all this stuff up and getting resources Jeez, so that we can max out our uh, our gear by the time we get to the final parts guys. of the game. So, the so as I was saying about the, the non-boss fight, the boss fight, <gasps> the other issue is that we don't really have access to infinite ammo yet, you know, in this first playthrough. So... Uh, doing the fight the straight up way where we are actually shooting the enemies and defending ourselves can consume a lot of ammo so there's a, another reason to avoid that approach and to use the cheese method um, which is basically to run around the room until Ellie opens the door so in a new game plus playthrough where we'll have access to as much ammo as we need uh, it might be a t fun to just kind of do that straight out. up and, and not take any damage nonetheless. So this could be done, like I said, a lot faster. Um, if we didn't go around opening up all these crates. Oh my god, there's, there's thousands of them. They're breaking apart. That last sound from the necromorph sounded like a like he said something. I don't know what he said, but it sounded, you know, somewhat coherent. No loot shall escape me. There's some satisfaction to be had for um that clicking, you know, when you get your loot, that that audio cue, uh, I think that releases endorphins in my brain. That right there. Yeah, maybe not endorphins, but some dopamine. Yeah, that's the chemical I was thinking of. It gives probably give me a hit of dopamine. So a, a, a new game plus plus run where I'm not picking up stuff is going to be really, really weird if I do it. No loot shall escape me. Oh, this freaking crate is determined, isn't it? Look at this motherfucker. <laughs> I 
I think in addition to um, the benefit of opening these crates and getting the credits out and the ammo and whatever, uh, it also extends the duration of the video because I realized, I did, like after the fact, like now that I'm rewatching and looking at it, there isn't a ton left between uh, now and the end of the next chapter. So this actually works out as, as good filler. Though that wasn't my intent when I did it originally. I did it specifically because I wanted to get open all the crates and get all the resources. But it's had the secondary benefit of being a good filler uh, for what would otherwise be a really short video. Because once you align the, um, the two solar collectors, you're going to go inside and get pretty much straight into that boss fight. Uh, no, no, there's a there's a set piece moment coming up where we have to dodge stuff. So emotional, Isaac. You'll be there. He needs to reassure Ellie. We're going to talk more about sort of Ellie's um, emotional connection to Isaac. When we get to chapter, I think it's 14 or 13. Because it's rather interesting. Like, you know, they're not, they're spending time together, but not really. It's just in communique. So it's not like... Um, you know, they're they're in each other's company. Yet her her reaction to what happens um in chapter fourteen is surprising. But we'll get into that later. But we we, we begin to see a taste of it. Again, th the benefit of doing this post commentary is that I get to see and make connections that I didn't make while playing the game because uh, you know, our attention as a player is kind of focused in the present tense on our survival. And uh, the details of the story thread just kind of passes over our head. But coming back to it and watching them back to back in some cases uh, gives some even further insight. Lots of loot. See, definitely worth the time spent out there in space collecting all this stuff. Because you're able to sell it off and uh, buy some nodes, buy some ammo, and get our gear upgraded. You hear that background noise, there's a lot of growling. Sounds like there's a lot of creatures we're about to have to deal with because they've all flooded this area, Isaac, according this to Ellie. So there's like no action here. I'm sorry, y'all. But this is kind of what you need to do when you're doing a new playthrough. And, uh, you know, you're resource restricted, so we can't really s spend a ton of ammo killing everything that spawns. So just run around in a circle until Ellie opens the door. But it's also an opportunity to hear some of Ellie's banter unencumbered uh, by fighting. Isaac, I'll try to open the seas and, you know, and she's, she's a, a wise cracking um sarcastic girl so she's it's kind of fun kind of funny see shit look i'm giving it my codes but it's not working 
Ellie's easy to like, and I think that's kind of important because Isaac needs to kind of transition emotionally in terms of letting Nicole go and, uh, you know, finding a different way forward. And there's a reason why there's the term rebound relationship. Yes, yeah, see, yeah that's, that's funny. There's a reason why there's a term. <laughs> like, come on, you... How do you not like Ellie? You know what I mean? Yeah, so there's a reason why there's a term rebound relationship. Because it's a way to reset, you know, even if it doesn't work out, it's it's an opportunity to kind of reset emotionally. And Lord knows, uh, Isaac definitely needs an emotional reset. I mean, this entire story is him being plagued by his guilt. Um of his ex, so he needs to let her go. Ellie, you guys there? Did you make it? Now here's a moment of pathos. Shit, Isaac. Just... Shit. Hey, take it easy. It's okay. No, it's not. I was right here this morning with a crew of 30 people. But we were overrun. And before I knew it, they transformed. I had to cut the arms and legs off my friends just to escape. Pieces of them still See, even in that moment of darkness, she has some levity. I'm sorry. And here I am again. I've just walked one big fucking circle today. We'll get through this. Let's figure out how to meet up. Right. Um... There's a, a central hub in the main facility. Here are the coordinates. Okay, so we're, we're coming up towards the end of this episode. Like I said, you know, without the little filler bit being out in space, it would have taken a little bit longer. Or it would have been, a, I mean, a much shorter video. So hopefully you guys didn't mind that too much. I um, want to thank you for watching. And um, so I'm going to cut it off here. I will catch you in the next one. Laters.